The following presentation is a Barrett Sports Media production. Recognizing the unsung heroes of sports media. I'm stuck in this pit, working for less than slave wages, working on my day off. This is the Producers Podcast with Brady Farkas. I'm the executive producer. Oh, you're the executive producer. And it starts now. Welcome in, everybody, to another edition of the Barrett Sports Media Producers Podcast. Today, I am very, very excited to welcome on Jeremy Donovan. He works in video production and is the multimedia coordinator at Binghamton University. So he deals a lot with the ESPN3 and ESPN Plus broadcasts that go on for the Bearcats Athletic Department. He's going to tell us exactly what goes into putting on a live video production of live sports and all the different tentacles that go into it and exactly how it can help you in your career, whether you are a student or a young professional. Enjoy Jeremy Donovan from Binghamton University. Jeremy, video production multimedia coordinator. That is your title. What does it mean? Depends on the day, I guess. Uh, (laughs) Generally speaking, I'm in charge of all of our live streams uh, for ESPN3, ESPN+, Plus, America East TV, I'm also responsible for our video board content. Uh, Currently, we have video board sets in the event center for basketball, um, wrestling that takes place in the event center. Um, And we also have two video boards now out at our newly renovated baseball stadium. So all the player content, you know, ad content, I get a lot of help um, in terms of creating some sponsor stuff from our marketing department. Uh, But, you know, any player features that we do that run during, you know, halftime or inning breaks, starting lineups, uh, matchup graphics, all that stuff. But the bulk of my time gets spent with uh, the live streams and our video production. Take basketball for starters here. Are you sitting courtside next to the official scorer and the sports information director? Is that your position or are you hunkered down in some bunker somewhere? (laughs) I, I'm not courtside, uh, but I'm also not necessarily hunkered down as some <laughs> schools would be. Our production room is actually up on our concourse level, uh, kind of tucked away in the corner of our arena um, with windows out so people can kind of peer in a little bit. We kind of reconfigured the uh, layout of our room so it's a little harder to see in, not that that was the intended purpose, but... Um, it's just one of the side effects, but we actually do have direct line of sight to the court as opposed to some other schools or venues that, uh, as you said, they're kind of hunkered down and it's kind of away from, you know, bas- down in the basement and, you know, with no windows, which, you know, give, there are pros and cons, I guess, to both setups. <laughs> are you pressing buttons on your own or are you there with a headset calling shots like what we kind of think of as a usual television director um it depends on my crew for the day um in an ideal situation fully staffed i'm you know the one that's calling the shots and telling you know which telling rtd which camera to go to uh bring up this replay bring up these graphics etc etc um you know, once we hit winter break or so, and some, you know, most <laughs> of my students are, are home, then I kind of have to wear an additional hat or two or three and have to be the one TDing shows. Um, so it kind of depends. I have done multiple jobs in a broadcast when I don't have the student crew to fill in, but luckily my students are typically very available and they all do some great work. So it kind of helps relieve some of the stress of my job. Yeah. I was going to ask you, that leads me into my next question. And I think this probably changes depending on what university you're at, but is the crew for an ESPN three ESPN plus game, is it all student driven or are there part-timers that come in just on a game-by-game basis? Uh, It depends on the school. Uh, We're very much uh, more student-heavy. Some schools um, contract out and find, you know, production companies, crews local to their university and just hire out professionals because for them the cost of that is worth the – I guess, removing the headache of having to staff it and, you know, worry about it. 
we made the decision, you know, before I even started at the university, the decision was made that we were going to do all the work in house. You know, so we started out with a volunteer student crew. We have since started paying them as, you know, interest dwindled. Um, when we started doing more outdoor sports in sub zero temperatures <laughs> with, you know, uh, the only payment being pizza or so. Um, so now they are, you know, part time uh, student workers. We do have a handful of independent contractors, young professionals, um, alumni that, you know, stayed in the area that we keep you know, kind of on hand because they know how the system works and they work, you know, and, and they want to be in production or if anything, it's some extra spending money. Um, but it is, as you said, very student based. Um, our play by play on air talent is uh, professional non students, but all of our cameras, TDs, audio, graphics, replay, everything is all students. So let me ask you another follow up to that. You know, so th- I think everybody takes something a little bit different from this podcast. Sometimes I think the people listening are people who are already in the business. And I think sometimes the people listening are people who want to get into the business. So if you are currently a student or if you are someone who is a young professional who's looking to piece together work in this business, how beneficial could contacting your local university be to your career development? Or if you are a student getting involved with your university's you know, live sports production? It's a great way to get involved and learn, start to learn some of the steps of how to, you know, run a camera, run a switcher, run a replay system, you know, and, and while not all switchers are created equal, not all cameras are created, created equal. If you know how to use one, you can kind of feel your way, you know, one model, you can kind of trial and error, feel your way into making another one do the exact same things. Um, you know, so you might not like, you know, our replay system, we have, um, an Everts uh, DC one in our baseball facility. We have an avid playmaker in our event center. Um, you know, there's dozens of other brands out there that, you know, you're, you're going to have a rewind button. You're going to have a play button. You're going to have a way to make clips. You can f- kind of you know feel your way through just by getting a entry level experience uh, with your university. And there's no better time to do it than when you're a student or fresh out of school and have yet to latch on to a full time position. We'll talk about basketball again when everything is fully staffed and you have the ideal setup. What is the setup like? How many people are working? How many cameras, et cetera? In a fully staffed basketball game, we have four manned cameras. um, And just last year, we introduced two basket cams, which don't require anybody to run them. But, you know, so we do have six cameras total. Uh, But so that's four students there. TD would make five, replay six, graphics seven, audio eight. Um, And then we do have an in-house show as well. So someone to switch cameras for the video board, nine, somebody to run the video board, all the fan prompts and player graphics, et cetera, 10. And then a scoreboard replay, 11 plus me is 12 play by play and color in an ideal world. If we get all the kinks worked out, we could have a sideline reporter to interview coaches coming on and off the court at halftime and end of game. So, you know, 14, ish people and depending on who you ask i'm sure we could probably find room to add a few more but (laughs) obviously the more people you add the higher the budget number goes up and that's in this day and age you know a tough sell (laughs) how important is it for again these young professionals or these college students how important is it for them to learn everything kind of in the department and i've told this story before on the air many times that when I started in college, I just kind of was thrust right into talent. And I just kind of assumed, hey, I'm just talent. I don't need to do anything else. And as a result, when I graduated, I was very behind the eight ball. I actually lost out on a job in radio because I didn't know how to run the radio board and because I had never done it because I never thought that I needed to do it. So how important is it for someone who may be interested in, in on-air work or on, you know, on radio work to learn the behind the scenes stuff that, uh, you know, an opportunity like Binghamton University can provide. You and me both. And I'll also, yeah. I'll, I guess I'll, I'll shoulder some of that blame for uh, robbing <laughs> you of that, uh, of, of that opportunity. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's definitely huge. Um, I mean, I remember, you know, similar to you when I was in college, I kind of, you know, I, I knew I wanted to be on air after school. Um, so I, 
kind of focused mainly on being talent. And every time I was trying, you know, the, the limited amount of times that I tried to learn something behind the scenes, everybody's like, Oh, well, but we need you anchoring or we need you. So I was, you know, um, it was as much my fault as it, or more my fault, I guess, than it was anybody else's that I didn't get that experience. But then when I couldn't fresh out of school, couldn't find a job immediately on the air, um, and a year and a half later ended up as a production assistant at the uh, Fox affiliate here in Binghamton, working the audio board, floor directing, shooting, editing, you know, very little actual reporting. Um, it was a bit of an eye opener and it's like, huh, this would have all been the learning, the learning curve here would have been a lot easier if I had done this stuff in school yeah. and I had the chance. Um, so I tried to impress upon my kids that, that you may enjoy replay a lot more than you like everything else, but it doesn't hurt to learn as much as you can, because the more, you know, the more versatile you are, the more valuable you are when you go to find a job. And that goes for really any business, you know, you should know how, um, you know, how to run an executive board meeting as much as you should know how the mailroom works. Um, you know, just top to bottom, it never hurts to know as much as you can about any given organization. Another aspect of producing that I think a lot of people didn't realize existed. Position of producer has changed a lot in the last eight years since I got into the business. There's a lot more of them. They do a lot of different things. They're involved in live streaming and YouTube shows and web content, et cetera. We learned a little bit more about some of that stuff today. Jeremy Donovan, video production, multimedia coordinator, Binghamton University. Jeremy, appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right, that was Jeremy Donovan from Binghamton University. Again, the video production multimedia coordinator and my old college buddy. He made a reference there to uh, maybe it being his fault that I didn't do all the behind-the-scenes stuff back in the day. Well, that's because we were students together at Oswego State University. Certainly not his fault, definitely my fault. But I did take a lot away from our conversation. One, again, the as we've done more and more of these episodes, I'm just learning more and more about all the different kinds of producers that there are and that you can't just be you know beholden to producing one thing there is production value in all aspects of media and all aspects of sports media i also do take away from it that Working in a college or university setting can be great for your career development. If you are a student, you should be doing it. If you are a young professional, we've all been there where you're grinding, putting together part-time jobs, trying to make enough money, trying to learn, trying to get exposure, contact your local college or university and see if you can help them out with any aspect of their live sports production and learn how to do everything. I'm, I'm not joking with you. I lost out on a radio job at the beginning of my career because I couldn't run the board. Learn how to coil cables, learn what buttons do, learn cameras, learn radio production, learn podcast distribution, learn it all. And Jeremy crystallized that. That's it for us today on the Barrett Sports Media Producers Podcast. We'll see you on the next one. You don't want to believe it, but maybe the show is over. Thank you for listening to the Producers Podcast. To enjoy past and future episodes, check out iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, the iHeart app, and BarrettSportsMedia.com. 